All right, talking tunes, and we're here with uh, Kathy, the beautiful Kathy. We took her hair down today, too. I know. Oh. Thanks, my daughter did it for me tonight. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> That's the only reason it's done. And then, of course, I'm sorry, Bob. I mean, look, at, look at the way Bob's looking at me when I said that. It's like, we are talking about my wife like yeah. that more. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> if, 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 yeah, Bob here, we have a, a kind of sick, getting sick, Britta. No, I'm getting I'm getting over it. This is the first time I've been able to talk in like four days. So this is healthy. This is healthy. This is healthy me. Last week you said you knew sign language, so maybe no, no, I don't know. I lied and I want to learn sign language. That was one of her lies, maybe. That was that was my lie in our three. Yeah, <laughs> I know some sign language. I do. The sick man himself is back, also, Mister. Mr. Peter Tripp, the curly-headed kid in the third row. <laughs> <coughs> okay, yeah. That's why they put us together at this end of the table. So <laughs> put a couple of mics way. <laughs> okay, well, we've got a lot to talk about. Of course, we want to talk about Leonard, or I should say Steve James from MUS, Hello. who is also with us. But uh, before we get to that, i got to show you guys something that I got. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard, you know, you look at Facebook and you That's see all the so stupid stuff that they have in there. They had the two terabyte um, flash drives. I had to buy and try it. And so far I've been putting these guys. It seems to be worth it. Came from Japan, took me eight weeks to get here. But uh, this is the instructions they sent me. Can anybody <laughs> read these instructions? Anybody yeah, can see this? plug in. Yeah, plug in. What is that yeah. called? What did you buy? Well, it's, it was supposed to be a microphone that goes through the phone. Ooh. So Remotes, because you know, this summer we're going to be doing a lot of stuff outside and whatever. Is that like Mr. Microphone? Like, hey, good looking, I'll be back. And remember that commercial? Hey, good looking, I'll be back. <laughs> Did I? Did I just blow your joke? I'm sorry. This is what it reminded well, anyway, me of. It, it's supposed to go through the Bluetooth. Well, it um, doesn't go through the Bluetooth, but I can't get it to work through my phone. Oh, well, no. It's kind of cool. Here. The Bluetooth device is reading too pale. Okay, what, what language is that? That sounds like Britta's voice. That, be, that sounds Japanese. When I'm not sick. <laughs> when, it was me. They think. It was the microphone. Hey, they oh, that was you. Later. That's what I'm going to say. Britta, that was you. But it also oh, has. Oh. What? It also has. Hello. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is so funny. Wow. Like, I, I love it. I love it. having it's 10 bucks. I, had, I love to have a good time with my dog with this thing. <laughs> What's up? Okay, I and mean, then this one's my favorite. I think I did it. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Bill Marshall. <laughs> That's the Bill Marshall setting. The Bill Marshall setting. Can you play Britta's again? No. Like that? Okay, that one Britta, the first one. Oh my gosh. When I'm not sick. Yeah. The not sick Britta. Yeah, the first one. I gotta wait for the deep. Hello? Oh, that's so the, that's a deeper one, I think. That's a deeper Bill. Hello? That's regular. Hello. It better not be me. Jesus. Bird of the early years. I thought that was her voice on there earlier. Oh, that wasn't? No, it was not Bella. Oh, for crying out loud, if I sound like that, then I'm just going to jump right out of this window. Well, that really is a, a children's show. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Well, look who's got it. It's supposed to go. Oh, um, my gosh. Everything's coming up for kids. You can read these instructions that are, you know. You know, it looks like it should be an award. Like, now getting the golden microphone. (laughs) The Beat Awards. (laughs) I think we can call it something else. I was thinking pink. I was thinking pink. No, I like it like that. Rose gold. But then it's rose gold. The handle. The handle's rose gold. Yeah. So you can play it. Oh, it's the Oscar Osbo yeah. Award. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, then. Yes. That's got a little quality here. That's like yeah. You got that's at least worth three bucks. So instead of it being just that gag was worth at least three bucks. Instead of it being called the Oscars, it's the Osbos. It's it's Oscar Osbo Award. The Os- <laughs> this is for karaoke. There's on the other the flip what side is karaoke instructions. What? It's in Chinese on the other side. But it was supposed to be karaoke on the phone. Oh, you can tell. You can read that? 
He said it's a Chinese or Japanese. I'm impressed that you can tell the difference in writing. Well, that, well karaoke is a Japanese. Oh, word. That, okay. Yeah, right. so that's where it comes from. I would guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's got a lot of different functions. I just don't know how to read it because I can't read the instructions. That's the only thing that's holding you back. Right? Oh, right. oh, okay, because yeah. yeah, you can, okay. I blew it up on my phone and tried to read it, but I just still couldn't figure it out, so. I, I need can't to get, I can't I need to get my grand. You couldn't put it into so. uh, Google Translate with the, you know, like, copy well, it, it's, an it's just a it's small English. print. It's just, oh, oh, you're exciting. saying it's actually in English. Well, I thought yeah. you were, because yeah, I yeah. saw the print. Mm -hmm. was, uh, I don't think it's that complicated a device, to be honest with you. It probably isn't, but. It's like getting a toaster and reading the instructions. So this is called Karaoke Treasure. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. And this is, these are the karaoke treasure instructions. So, so, so Brittany can use that mic when she sings at, her, at the wedding, right? Can I? <laughs> Do you want me to put it on the chipmunks, the chipmunk setting? And they have like the chipmunks singing at your wedding? I can't wait for your wedding. I'm going to marry them again. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna put it on. Oops. Uh, we're not sure yet. We haven't really quite figured it all out. Oh, I thought it was March, but okay. It's in March, but okay. we haven't And that's out. going to be what anniversary? It's not something on Facebook. It's a 20, 20 years. Yeah. Well, congrats. Yeah. That's, that's great. Good. Yeah, I think so. this is it's getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. It's turning into really. Well, I'm thinking what we could have it if we have a crowd. We could have it out there in the hallway. We could look it up. Paul can run the sound. We've got cameras going. You know, we've got mm -hmm. the whole thing. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I that's what we're looking for. You're the man we're looking for. Yeah, just you know? the guy. Yeah. Actually, Paul, Paul's <clears> the guy that, I mean, he loves to sing. I hope my mouth is singing and everybody just flies out the room. <laughs> all his songs sound the same. He said, remember this song? And he sings it, it's like, no. Remember the song? He sings the exact same thing. Bob does it. He sings yeah. one note. One note, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it's like one note. Yeah. One note. So Careful. when we do when we do the forty the, the forty five chorus line mm -hmm. show, if Paul sang it, you won't know what he's saying. So it's just one of It sounds head. good to me. Yeah, that's, that's, all, really that's, that's all that matters. Just, that is all that matters. Come out to everybody else's ears the way it should yeah. be. Well, you know what? Maybe Doesn't you matter. Karaoke mic. <laughs> there you go. Maybe yeah, that would be it. Yeah, yeah. And we all had golden ears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might kind of looks like the mic that would match Elvis's outfit there on the oh, yeah, '68 comeback. There. This is. The, I don't. Even, this is some shade of gold. This is some really. Shade, yeah. this, mm -hmm. I mean, but actually, actually, if you think about that, that's actually great marketing because they made it look good. Yeah. yeah. Really, nothing of of, of real significant yeah. uh, electronic value. Right. But it looks really good. It's got a it's got little microphone cheap. in it, so there you go. That's like, half the yeah, battle anyway. Yeah, this is so bigger. Yeah, it caught so my eye right away when I walked in. Uh, I like the the bubble wrap that came in myself. But, you know, I'll play with that for hours. That's pretty awesome. That's vertical. <laughs> vertical. Yeah, vertical bubble bubble wrap, Vertical yeah. bubbles. Yeah, yeah. they like step on that. The largest bubbles I've ever seen. If this is on Amazon, you could have this like tomorrow. Yeah. And you could probably have it for half price. <laughs> but there, there was another, see, I, I'm a sucker for that, the cheap stuff that, I, that says it's better than what it is. Because I, I remember getting yeah. the HD, remember the, I got the HD uh, uh, camera that was supposed to fly, we were supposed to use the camera for when we DJ, we were going to have the big screen for the old video yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I ordered that thing and it came, and it, it was not, what it was, uh, it was not what it, what it was supposed to be. It was kind of like, uh, I don't know, what, what was it? It was kind of a, it said HD, but it was kind of like little dots on the, on the whole, on everything. It was just terrible. Yeah. And it was like 50 bucks. So I figured, well, you know, 50 bucks, I guess I didn't lose everything. But anyway, um, I said I was gonna send it back, but I didn't like the quality. And they said, just keep it. We, we don't want to pay the ship. Yeah, we don't, we don't want it back. It's not Keep worth it. it. It's not worth the $4. Not worth it. Keep it. Like, oh, okay. So anyway, so we got to talk to uh, the one and only Steve James from MUS. Hello. And uh, Steve Harvey, of course. Steve Harvey. And Leonard Harvey. What do we call you Steve Harvey? I think you should admit. <laughs> so, Did you go by Steve Harvey? Actually, you know, true story. Yeah. Speaking of Harvey. Because uh, the first job I had on the radio before MUS was little WKJR out on Seaway Drive back in 71. Worked there like three months. 
my first job. I'm 17 years old, right? And uh, I'm using Leonard Harvey. And so some, you know, the question always comes up, are you related to Paul Harvey, right? Well, I actually met Paul Harvey. I was down making national agency calls with Cats Radio on North Michigan Avenue in Chicago. And walk up and we see a sign that says Paul Harvey Boulevard. And I said to the uh, the national rep I was with, I said, hey, I didn't know they had a Paul Harvey Boulevard here. And he goes, yeah, speaking of Paul Harvey, there he is, you wanna go meet him? He was across the street, so we walked up to him. It was interesting, by the way, I introduced myself, even though in those days I was Steve James, okay, most of the time, professionally, but I introduced myself as Leonard Harvey, and he made no observation or comment about it, not anything. He didn't, I didn't identify with it, but someone told me his, his actual name was Paul Harvey whatever. It, he had a different name, like Applegarth. Something. Harvey and Ski. <laughs> it was. It was not. You know, okay. Harvey. I think was actually his supposed to be. I thought I heard was his mother's maiden name. Oh, okay. And that's how he was. That's how he got his middle name, and that's what became Paul Harvey. So he sounded like Paul Harvey when he came up and said hello to you. Oh, absolutely. Just, yeah. Okay. But, but the thing that was interesting, he had Did just say, good day. He had just <laughs> been in Duluth, which is where I worked at the time, uh, Minnesota, and he had been there like the year before. Minnesota Power had brought him in for a speech. And in those pictures promoting him, here's this guy. He looks very youthful for a guy who's like pushing 80 something uh, when I met him. And of course, in person, he looks like, like the world just to beat him up something severely. I mean, he looks terrible. But that's the reality. Now, by the way, where I met him was a 10 story tall building behind him, which, by the way, he owned. <laughs> he owned the building in downtown Chicago yeah, on North Michigan Avenue. It was his building. Wow. And final <laughs> note on Paul, that not related to me, but how cool it is, is it, that ABC Radio renewed his contract when he was 90 yeah. years old. I was just going to say that, yeah. Yeah, they renewed his contract. And he didn't fulfill it, right? Right. But the fact is, he was actually offered that. Mm -hmm. So, and, and if you really think about what Paul Harvey did so well, is he had amazing voice inflection skills. Right. Like, good day. Yeah. That wonderful pause that he always added, that wonderful oh, pause, yeah. the pause yeah. where you're like, and that is the rest yeah, of the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now you know and the yeah. rest of the story. The rest of the story. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just an amazing guy. Yes. Yeah, because his son did it for a little while, I think. But yeah, like, and Paul yeah. Harvey Jr. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he was not, you know, he just did, simply didn't have the chops that the old man had. He, yeah. uh, his dad was phenomenal. Yeah, his mother still, she still wrote for it, because she was the one that wrote all the stories. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know that. Paul Harvey, yeah, Paul yeah. Harvey's yeah. It wouldn't surprise me. She wrote all the stories, yeah. yeah. But anyway, so I actually ran in, being the namesake, I, I actually ran into Paul Harvey once. So okay. kind of an off the- That's area, very cool. Kind of thing. Well, he was very nice. We've got many more stories coming from Steve James, Leonard Harvey, whatever they call Slash, them. yeah, Michigan lover. There you go. Anyway, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back with that after this. Oh my gosh! Hi, Jones. Let's not. No. <laughs> Uh, we're here with uh, with the whole the whole crew is here except for G Man. G Man's the only one missing. Every, yeah. every week just just one person missing. But hey, we got G Man. I don't know where we're. They get him and Emily. They went somewhere. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Bahamas maybe. We don't know. <laughs> I think I just think it's just like a little random guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So we have Kathy here though, and, mm -hmm. and she's here. She's got her hair down and. <laughs> Looking gorgeous. She always looks gorgeous. <laughs> she is hot. We have, of course, Bob, and we have Britta, and we have uh, Peter Tripp, the curly Kim, the third row. <laughs> so we got everybody here, and then we got, of course, the, our special guest, Leonard, uh, who is here, Leonard Harvey or Steve James, whichever way you want to say I'm it. obsessed with his voice. Yeah. It, it just takes me back. Yeah, but, you know, she yeah, went, you know this isn't my real voice. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's <laughs> she's <laughs> the it took years to learn to yeah. sound like this. Yeah. Okay, that's an old bad radio. Yeah, yeah. Well, she was obsessed with your voice, and, and of course, listening to Chris Chris Roberts. And, mm -hmm. you know, oh yeah, it was just yeah. like oh my god. Yeah, you know, yeah. the old MUS crew. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. love like my Jim childhood. Jim Cox was one of them. Yeah. Well, probably know what we're talking about. We get together like 
once a month. Yeah. Yeah. A bunch of old radio guys that, old, that have old, lunch. Old farts. Old farts, yeah. yeah. And we get together and have lunch. And um, so Kathy was there, yeah. and Jim Cox was there, and uh, Sayer, Chris Roberts. <laughs> and <laughs> I know, it was nice to be included last time. And our friend, fun. my friend Randy Rogowski, who, who was involved at MUS years ago, yeah. uh, he was there. And so, yeah, but we get different people. Tim Akroff shows up, Randy Crow. Oh, my gosh. Uh, lots of people. You know, Cliff Martin was there. Cliff a Martin times. has been there a couple times. Yeah. And uh, Britta, you, I guess the Bill. <laughs> Bill uh, <laughs> Was Bill Marshall? No, Bill. No, Bill. he owns the religious station out in the north side. Of town. Yeah, yeah, nice guy. I can't remember um, his name though. Nice guy, great yeah. guy. Yeah, and then yeah. he's going to shoot us for not remembering. Yeah, yeah. Who's the sales guy? Uh, the rant or the quiet? Yes, the, the sales guy. That's Randy. Randy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Randy Wagowski. Yeah, Randy. You know his dad. Well, I was playing not a radio name, Randy Rogowski. Well, <laughs> anyway. Randy's father was bunk our bunker. Rogowski was president of MUS for the fifties, early fifties, till he passed away in uh, I believe early nineties. So, okay, yeah, he's been there forever. That's a great name. Yeah, yeah. Our, our, what is it? Our bunker. well, it's our bunker. Rogowski. Oh, our wow. Yeah, our bunker. Yeah. everybody Rogowski. called him there. Bunker. Uh, oh. was bunker. <laughs> no. That was, well, that's how everybody knew. Say that yeah, a few times. It was times. the voice of our childhood. And uh, I got on those guys about, remember the mixtape, the comment? Um, oh, yeah. With yeah. you guys, old school DJs. And I, I blamed them for, you guys, for ruining every Talking mix over the intro. I tried to make. Like, what do you guys <laughs> yeah. have against the last 20 seconds or uh, so of every song? <laughs> We well, are supposed to talk up and down the yeah, ramps, yeah. right? I mean, is that what you call that? Yes. It's ramps. Yes. It's the music before yes. the first vocal. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, so you got to cram in as many. Yeah. You got to cram in as much. We were only limited to so much time that we could talk. So when we're allowed to talk over the first five seconds or ten seconds in the last five or ten seconds, right. we were taking it. You know, we were first, taking it. Well, I'm sure you made plenty of mixtapes. Oh, heck Remember yes. How frustrating that was? Yes. <laughs> yes, I know. But we had to follow, you know, when our bosses yeah. would say, you know, you got to cram in as much information as you can and you only have this amount, amount of time, then you do it whenever you can. And I... I, I agree. I my mixtapes were always ruined. But anyway. Well, I always laugh because we got. Uh, I remember one time I wanted to do a weekend airship at MUS, and I wasn't feeling well. I was, I was getting a cold or something. Long story real short, I just did a super straight show, no extra talking, any of that. Tim happened to be the hmm. actor of. And he comes out at the end of the show and he goes, that was one of the best shows you ever <laughs> do. There was no extra. I was good at that one. Doing a yeah. straight thing. You know, I, tip stories, there's a ton of tip stories, but I remember Mark, Mark Dixon called me on the phone when I was on the air and said, Tim is going to follow you. Make sure everything is straight and in order when he gets this. Yes. You know, because yeah. Tim was a real anal. If you've he, ever he, been to his only way home. To put it. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely yes. spotless, yes. spotless. Yeah. everything is perfect, yeah. and Mary Lou handles it all beautifully, yeah. his wife, she, you know, so she, she <laughs> rolls with it all. That's got to be a job right itself right there. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think she likes it too, I think they yeah, both, yeah, they probably, kind yeah. of prefer yeah. to have their home yeah. that way, which, yeah. you know, I sort of admire because well, everything's in its place. It surprised me too when I was there to interview Tim. Yeah, um, for he, Legends he, of Mosquito Yeah, for Radio. Legends of Mosquito Radio. He didn't even make me take my shoes off. I was like, really? <laughs> he used to, by the way. Did he? Yeah, it's only been the last couple of years. Yeah. I, I, I was, was really shocked. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. So anyway, we're, we're talking about you and then. Now, what year did you start in? Uh, 71 anyway. is when I went into radio. When I went to MUS, it was 71. Okay. Actually. And, and that was Giles Road, right? Uh, yeah, that was on Giles Road. Mm -hmm. A little known fact, I, I actually worked just a couple months the first time I was at MUS. I actually had a second I went to WQWQ okay. and worked briefly for three months yeah. until you, re you realized you were going to die. Oh, you I, it's there. you know, it's beautiful music. I loved it. You know yeah. what? I people music. I grew up. No, I grew up listening to you on WQWQ. Well, no, only for three months though. Oh, but you know what? I, I Leonard Harvey. Was it no, Leonard? that was that was the station that was on in our house was WQWQ, yeah. okay. and I I. 
I yes, loved it. Uh, I thought it was beautiful music. I did. It was uh, WQWQ mm -hmm. Stereo 104.5. <laughs> yes. Beautiful music. Uh huh. Half hours a day. <laughs> I can still remember that. that. <laughs> well, that's what we're supposed to do. That the sounds program familiar. director was originally from Houston, and he was from a classical music station. Yeah. So what a trip. This guy was really wanted it toned down. Uh, which he was right. I mean, we're mm -hmm. playing Andre Constellanets. We're playing the twin pianos. I mean, you're playing a few vocals mm -hmm. that are, you know, famous old yeah. 40s, 50s singers. So Kathy's yeah. favorites. Yeah. That's what she was trying Apparently to do. Apparently, Alberta's favorite. No, honestly, that <laughs> honestly, I did groove on it. That's what I. That was what I. Loves no, it was either WTRU or WQWQ. Really? And it was just like when he was saying the. Remember what you had to your. Um, in California. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When I lived in Southern California, oh, cool. and my first gig was to be to sound Spanish, then you know. I, Do that again. That's oh right. no, I don't. With my laryngitis yeah, voice. Laryngitis. <laughs> okay. This is your ID. <laughs> my first gig at the age of nineteen. I don't think I can do it with laryngitis. Okay. <sighs> 91X FM Baja California, Mexico. I, I had to say, I, I can't even do it with laryngitis. I had to, say, I had to sound Spanish. I love it. That's great. So, when was WQWQ? Uh, it actually signed on in 71. I was their first night announcer. That, like I said, for three months. That's Wait. why it's familiar to me because that's when I moved out here. And I think yeah. Yeah, I listened to that station for TRU when I first moved yeah. here in 80. TRU was still going, not very much longer, but it was still on. Now, the reason I left the station, this is absolutely true, um, I always worked nights. So, of the course, answer. they they had to put me on Sunday morning on the weekend shift, right? Totally opposite sleep time. I happened to be out with a young lady that previous evening, quite late, got in and had two, three hours sleep before the, the 5.30 sign-on. Go ahead, it gets to be about a quarter after seven, and I'm just dragging. I mean, I'm so tired, I can hardly keep my eyes open. So I thought, well, you know, I'll just lay my head down for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I wake up 20 minutes later. Now, fortunately, I, I was we were tracking records, and I hit the second cut when I set it up. So it tracked through the second to the sixth cut. And it is WQWQ, and it was a Sunday morning at 7, 25, 30, whatever. So nobody actually noticed. Right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I did. I was listening. Yeah. I did. I did. Right. It's 7.30 break, right? So I, quick, I wake up and I go, oh my gosh, oh, it's still playing. Oh, okay. The quick out of that, into a break, 10 minutes of music, into the 7.45 break. And I, that, my show ended at noon. I called up Tim Actorhoff and said, Tim, you've got to hire me back. I just fell asleep on this radio station. <laughs> and he said, actually, I was thinking of calling you. Yes, we, we'll put you back on nights. We're good. And I said, great. Thank you. You're saving me. <laughs> that was it. And I, then I spent 13 years there at MUS between no, being on the air. Oh, yeah, time. between being on the air for about five. And then I went into sales, yeah. and then sales management, and then they promoted me to Duluth to run the classic rock stage. We we'll tell that story too about Randy Crow because Randy Crow was a newbie. Yeah, he was. He rolled in about 77, 78, yeah. and he was just this 18, 19 year old kid. And he came from TRU. Yeah, he had worked at True. He had been doing afternoon drive over there. And Randy Collins. And, he, and it was weird because we just interviewed him yeah. for yeah. our Legends of Muskegon Radio the other day. I got to do the interview with him. And, and he talked about the fact that I said, you know, why didn't you go talk to Fred Tascone about selling advertising? Because ultimately he came over to MUS and said to Tim Actorhoff, I want to sell ads. And he, and he said, well, you know, it's funny. They had such icons in the sales department at WTRU that he felt like, I just don't, uh, I, didn't, I couldn't see where there was an opening for me. So he comes over to MUS. So for a moment, you talk about how things happen in radio that change the, 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 the uh, uh, landscape. Two, two events related to around MUS that changed. As we all know, growing up in the 60s, WTRU was the radio station. They absolutely killed it. They owned the town. KBZ was very strong.
But in that period of time, True was the station. So on the AM dial. Yes. Yeah. And and of course at that point there's a point where Tim Actorhoff is just coming out of high school and he wants a job and he wants to work at True. We all wanted to work at True in those days, right? And so he ends up applying for a job and it ends up going to a guy by the name of Bob Moore. Now Bob Moore would end up there working on the on the air at True for a couple of years, go to ZZM FM, be on the air doing mornings for three years in the late 60s, early 70s, and then eventually would become an engineer, and we found out through our interview with him, he worked in LA, he worked in Dallas, he worked in New York City, he worked, uh, what, Syracuse, he worked uh, Buffalo. Yeah. I mean, he worked some major markets. He worked at the old station. Oh. Yeah, in fact, he, he, yeah, he was at Case, or WCBS AM, yeah. and uh, WINS, I think, the new station. And, and the bottom, bottom line is he said, I said, did you ever you know, meet anybody famous? He goes, yeah, Walter Cronkite. <laughs> he said, I ended up doing a, a little engineering thing for Walter Cronkite once, you know? Well, he was in New York. Uh, but anyway, uh, so that was one thing. That changed the, the landscape only because if Tim Actorhoff had gone to True instead of MUS, MUS may have never emerged because Tim was really Tim was the, the, the guy that made yeah. that happen. But the other significant thing is, is that Randy never asked Fred Tascone at WTRU, uh, would you let me sell advertising for you? He just assumed he wouldn't be able to and therefore came over to MUS and ended up working there for several years. And eventually at some point, I said to Tim Akerhoff, when I was named sales manager for about a year at the radio station at MUS, I said, hey, I said, this Randy Crow, this kid is impressive. I said, your sales manager really should be him. Not me, this kid has really got it. And he should be the one you should be putting in this job. So we made a switch, and I ended up then going to run, be the GM in, in Duluth, Minnesota at the 100,000 watt FM classic rock station. So it was really just a uh, so series of events. I mean, both of them could have been a true. Yeah. What would that have done with WTRU? And one of the things that I've always said is true needed an FM station, and they never, by the time they got to that point, it was too late. Yeah, well, we're MUS well, had already taken over the Fred Gascon, he, he bought KBZ and uh, uh, 95.3, which was Rock 95 at the time, and he had his FM station. But yeah. That didn't work out too well, but anyway, that's another story. Yeah, right. So when did, when did Randy Crow get in? Because now, of course, I know him as being the big advertising guy, right. you know. Oh, yeah, you know so he just worked him, just yeah. worked his way into that from that point there. He actually, he was telling us, and I didn't know this, RC Productions, which is his ad agency, originally started out as Andy just Rose. voice work. Mm -hmm. for him. Okay. And I did that. I, I, w I worked for him when it was just oh, simply, you're, you're, oh, I've done lots of work. Mark Stevens too, right? I love Mark. I love Mark Stevens. Mark, Mark I Stevens. miss him so much. It was, it was kind of funny because Randy and I we were talking because it was like Mark Stevens was, he was, what a voice. What a voice, what a talent. Yes. He put anything together, commercial. And, I and did. Randy said that Mark, when he came in there, didn't know anything about video. Yes. And learned it all from scratch and everything else. I mean, that well, that actually, that's how I met Mark, is through Student Showcase, which we'll talk about next week. But that's how I met Mark. Okay. And I got in with Randy Crow and Tim Akterhoff through all of this. Actually, they, they did more than just voice work for commercials. I did a line of baby products where a voice was coming out. I can, I can bring you one of my toys. There were baby toys and that came from RC Productions, baby toys where you shake the ball. My voice is coming out of baby toys all over the world. That's, That's some scary stuff. That's such a nice voice. The, no. the, the one commercial that I love that you were in was that with preferred auto or something? Oh, I did all their tele television commercials. Yeah, I know. And, I know. We, we, oh my gosh, that was ridiculous. Don't ever put me on television. <laughs> I've got a face for radio totally. Oh, no, no, no. But I love Tim Actorhoff and Randy Crow. I love them for giving me that chance, but no. Yeah. I've got a face for radio completely right here. Uh, we were, uh, we were, uh, Anyway, but thanks, Oscar. <laughs> thanks, Oscar. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> oh. So anyway, we're gonna we'll take a break. We got more stuff to talk about, but I there's one thing I want to bring up here. Remember I talked about last week about the uh, chair volleyball. 
Remember the oh, yeah. Care yes, ball, yes. The Office Olympics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. And Chair Valley Ball, great fun for people ages uh, young to seniors. And I'm thinking Peter Tripp, the curly-headed kid, would be perfect. <laughs> this is actually happening. For well, what? Yeah, it happens every week on a oh. uh, Thursday. Oh. I think they play for golden microphones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, so we'll put Peter Tripp in that. We'll have to get him in there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, chair of volleyball. You can do that, can't you? I have no idea what it is. <laughs> Where is that? Well, volleyball in a chair. Basically. Okay. Now here, I'll let, you, I'll let you look at it while we take a break. Okay. You want me to sit back there? I can screw the show up real quick. I know, you can. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't have a show if you were back here. But anyway. Okay. I sure can't and that little smart remark went back to when he had me working with him at uh, KBZ. KBZ. And he took off to Detroit. I knew nothing about the I'm computer. <laughs> Yeah, and he, he got me and he said, all you got to do is push this button. I'm going, oh my God, I'm on the air. He wants me to push buttons. What's going to happen? What do I do if I push the wrong button? Boy, I could have, if you were in the room, I would have knocked you. It all went okay. I didn't screw up. But. <laughs> Welcome back to Talking Tunes. <laughs> That was a ranking of Peter Tripp, the curly-headed kid, in the third row. <laughs> one of our many, uh, one of our many um, adventures together, I guess. The eighty-year-old DJ, the oldest DJ, the oldest person in West Michigan, still working at a bar as a DJ. Yeah. Are yeah. you eighty? He's eighty. Mm. Yeah. But he doesn't look he it. He did not look it. He does not look it. At the homestead, every that, party. That's Saturday why they. Night. That's why they come into the homestead now. Is because they want to see this old man playing no. this little teeny bopper music. Well, I think we need to have such young lingo. Hey, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys. To me. <laughs> I think we need to take this show on the road. Really I, yeah. I think we need to take this show on the road and do it do it when he's there at the homestead. Mr. The microphone so we can take it on the road. We need to take it on the road. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If you do it, you want to do it early because you don't want to see what goes on after midnight. Those whippersnappers, I tell you. I've been playing bands for 25 years. I know exactly Yeah, she knows. She's been there. We've all been there. We all know. <laughs> okay, what I wanted to talk about, I, I don't know if Leonard uh, probably didn't have a chance to look at this yet, but I think the rest of you have that, that uh, thing that's been written about us that's supposed to be in the... Oh, you didn't really have it written it, read it yet? What? Okay, she doesn't read it. <laughs> It's, See, it's you've been sick like me. I don't know. It's something that was, was written about us uh, by the examiner. They interviewed me and, and Greg, and I guess that was it. So We're a blur, Britta, all the way down. I've top. been on Robitussin for the last five days. Well, See, I knew what was coming. That's why I got sick. <laughs> So anyway, there's this the story that's going to be coming out, but uh, like I say, we need to get a few things spelled right, like Britta's name. And, uh, and <laughs> your name's not spelled right. It's a, it's Our name is never spelled never. right. They yeah, spelled my right. name right. The, yeah, you're Berta. I'm Berta? Mm -hmm. yeah, hey, that's oh, all right. Yeah, so before long, the group was recruiting other area uh, radio veterans like Berta. You know Berta, yeah. Hey! Like Kathy Sorry. Becker. With the West Side Soul Surfers, you haven't been to Soul Surfers for quite some time. No, no, I mean, the, yeah, the, no, not for a long time. And what's the name of the new group? Betty Page. Betty Page. Meet so with John Merchant. They're I, awesome. I, I requested that they talk to both of you and also Bob, yeah. and we'll just leave them out of it. So, the old guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll tell stories that we don't even that want. That old whipper snapper. Yeah, that old whipper snapper over there. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys read it. What did you think of the story? Oh, I thought it was okay. Yeah, yeah it, was it was a good pretty good story. Though. Yeah, pretty, yeah, it, it was, you know we've changed it since it was first written because yeah. Greg's not—he's no longer doing his political rant at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so that <laughs> we won't be doing that. We're keeping it. Well, when he hears this, he'll he'll say yes, I am, Kathy. No, he. <laughs> <laughs> he can keep doing it. We just aren't going to play it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it makes him feel better. <laughs> go, go for it. Go for it. Right, really, it is. Tear off your chest. <laughs> Bob, what do you think? Because you're you're a veteran at the talking tunes. I mean, you've been doing it for all these years. Well, you did it for all those years. How many years, by the way, did you do it after I left? I don't know. 
I, you know, I don't admit to too much, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't remember exactly how long we were on, but probably three, four years. Yeah, right? probably two, That's three more years. Yeah, but, it's been uh, twenty. I mean, I remember. I was in labor and you went and did the show. <laughs> <laughs> That's my mom. It was our second it was our second kid. We I mean someone had to yeah. Yeah, someone had to run that board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the rest of them didn't even have a clue. They had no idea. Well, no, and they wanted to keep it that way. Yeah, I know exactly. <laughs> so anyway, so it was a good story. We're we're looking forward to when it comes out and we'll get a few things changed, I hope, and uh, before it does, but I'll give it to Britta so she can read it. And we'll see if we can get Peter Tripp in there mentioned somewhere. I don't know. But, you know, when we, when we first started writing this thing, none of us were really sure who was going to be in this Right, because Bill Eddings is still in the yeah, article. Bill John was, yeah, because Bill Eddings stopped mm -hmm. by. He was going to be in it. For some reason, he's not anymore. And uh, Annette wasn't with it. And now she's yeah. not. And, you know, so and then John, of course, has got his own little regular gig going on. They did yeah. their reunion honeymoon. Yeah, off pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. it was like yeah, we got did. together. Oh, you guys had know. a great time, had know. some great stories, and then it was like, yeah, let's let's do this again. Yeah. And then after like a week, they're like, nah, let's not do that. Yeah, anymore. we don't want to do that's that old. anymore. We're done. Yeah, one week, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> so it worked out good because we have like a nice little. Pop Yeah. Well, just just remember to pronounce my name correctly, though. It's Berta. It's Berta. It's Berta. <laughs> That's about it, too. That's about it. <laughs> you know what that brings back when you said that? The birth of butt boogie, remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> that's an oldie book. Wow, yeah, yeah. that's, that's yeah. going back. 1970. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and speaking of that, we've got uh, now Bob's show is called Who Am I? And uh, of course, we got my show. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, this segment. Know, it's, it's, it's a show. Man. It's a segment. It's a, it's a segment. show. It's a show unto itself. It is. For your your segment, man. Is uh, they do it. When is Bob's yeah. show going to be on? When is this yeah, guy going to shut up and Bob's When is he going to get his own show? I know, right? You do your own show when you do your big rides. So no, that's not my own show either. Well, it is. Mostly. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> but you do a great job. Oh, I, I have to tell you, I'm a huge fan of the guy. Yeah. I oh, usually, I'm I'm coming from a big a red. A big red. red. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, that means a lot. And I'm, I'm you know, huge fan of Bob. So I've been, I'm really pleased to finally get to meet him. And I met his wife here yeah. uh, about We're a month ago. And there's always somebody that has to sit between us. So you're the guy. <laughs> you, we never sit together. I don't know if you guys have picked up on that after four weeks. But. <laughs> you have, you came in a little later, so you didn't realize that when Bob walks in, we all bow down to him. He As you should. Him. Yeah. Yeah. Really. yeah. I get that. He is Bob. He is, wow. He's the man. He is, yeah. yeah. Backwards, he is Bob. I'm sorry, Bob. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't either. So I guess I don't get here early enough to see that. <laughs> so anyway, we got the Who Am I show coming yeah. up. Yeah, coming up. Don't, don't miss it. Either. And then I, I decided to call mine uh, 45 Chorus Line. Oh, Ooh. Oh, yeah. that's nice. That's yeah. really nice. That was cute. That was so, cute. Yeah, you got your singing voice ready? Nope. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> it could be really scary. You don't yeah. want me singing. Lisa Ball. Right. Right. We, and if you sing. Yeah, but between the two of us, yeah. maybe we'll <laughs> sing. Maybe yeah, you two should get together. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I thought the idea was to encourage people to listen to the radio. <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah, you know what's funny about this, and I got him laughing, is my voice is so terrible. And then I announced to him, well, I used to sing in the Blue Jacket Choir in the Navy. He fell on the floor. <laughs> I did. What happened? Cigarettes. <clears throat> oh, were you on a submarine when you did it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great acoustics. Yeah, there you go. Oh, jeez. Anyway, I just wanted to say with you real quick, too, about the, you and I have been doing a lot of the Legends yep, videos, yep. too. Do you want to say anything about that as far as what's what's going well, on? I'm sure that? your audience is somewhat aware from listening, you know, for those who listen regularly, but we are, you know, all participating. I think we're the only ones that listen, but, you know. You know well, hey, it's <laughs> good. It's cool. Um, basically, the Heritage Museum has decided they're going to, they agreed basically uh, to meet with John Van White, Oscar, Randy Crow, myself uh, about six months ago. And we're going to do a, 
uh, the history of Muskegon radio. Okay, and we're talking, and so the Legends interviews that Oscar is overseeing, which he's doing a fantastic job with. Uh, we're we're talking possibly uh, three, four dozen people ultimately will be interviewed before this is all done, and this is like a three-year project. This will there's been talk it could end up in the Lakeshore Museum portion of the exhibit ultimately, or. Now John Van Wyck has suggested that it would be really cool to put it in the window of the Heritage Museum right. uh, because, and then have a, a 1930s looking, um, you know, old turntables. I think I have some of that equipment uh, around here. <laughs> and we'll put one of you legends in there each week. Yeah. You sit there in the window. <laughs> but, but what he, well, it's funny you mention that because what he wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> this week's legend is. <laughs> Yeah, and just have their name up on the window. <laughs> you can have it in lights and on air. air. Yeah. Yeah. On but air. he actually wants to make the studio workable. Right. That it would actually, you could do a live broadcast from there. Yeah. Which would be kind of cool. So that's something we'll see. I mean, uh, it's, all, it's a process of collecting memorabilia from the old radio days. And, and it's been so interesting tracing radio and its history. Because you have so many different sides of it. You have, of course, the KBZ years in the what, 30s, 40s, 50s, and then True really dominated from the end of the 50s through the into the 70s. And, and of course, MUS emerged in the mid 60s, but didn't really didn't really start owning the ratings till about the mid 70s, right. as they got the FM up to 50,000 watts. And then in the <laughs> meantime, you have you have the minority side, like for example. Uh, uh, Maddie Wesley Davis, who most people may not have heard of, but she was a a woman who did a Christian program mm -hmm. on MUS from 1947. Black woman who did a Christian program from 47 till the late the early 90s, and she did how many Sundays in a row? It was like 2,800 yeah, Sundays in a row. Yeah, never missed. There, when I was there in 1990, I, I ran her show too. So yeah, yeah. For 90. I mean, and, and everybody that ever worked at MUS Radio engineered her show for a yeah, while. Yeah. I did it for a year, year and a half. I mean, anybody that ever was a jock there ended up engineering her taped portion of her show. But she also did a live version right. on Sunday morning in person. So she had an hour and a half every Sunday. But imagine this black woman walks into WMUS in 1947 and says, I want to have a Christian show on the radio. She had gone to KBZ. They said, we don't have any time available. It's all been purchased, which would be accurate. Right. I don't doubt that for a second. So this new station's on the air. She goes in there, and they're like, yeah, great. We love it. Let's do it. It was a 15-minute show to start with. And it worked its way up to an hour and a half over the years. But I, I'm such a hero, I'm such a fan of Maddie Wesley Davis, uh, Mother Maddie. She was great, uh, wonderful lady, wonderful spirit, wonderful soul. And uh, so, and I, like I said, I'm a huge fan of what she achieved. I think it's amazing what she did. Yeah. And and boy, I'll tell you what, it, it, she is legendary in terms of what she did. But then there's the other side of it too, which is like the sports side. Uh, we, we talk about Jim White. Yeah, we and talked about him last week, didn't we, Bob? Yeah, we brought him up, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna have Bob do the, the Legends interview with, uh, with Jim Moyes, because that's kind of where they, they all met and everything else, and Bob, Bob's a legend in his own time anyway, so. You know, <laughs> own time slot. Your own time slot. Yeah. Well, Bob should, Bob should be interviewed as well. well because remember, part of this goal, as you know, is that we're going to take bits and segments and pieces of some of these interviews because there may be certain people that right. get focused on that aren't going to be available for interviews right. and they would have valuable insight to share and that can be created as another opportunity for anybody visiting the exhibit to go, hey, this is cool, I didn't know, you know. And, and it is amazing and to be fair, I think you could go to any community in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s and you can say, you know, radio played such a critical part yeah, yeah. of their uh, quality of life. You, you have the people that wake <laughs> up every morning. Well, like you were saying, Britta, about the fact that your family would listen to WQWQ on Sunday mornings. So, and, and that was part of the tradition of family. I mean, radio played that kind of role more in those days. 
in, in fact, I would say now that people such as what Bob does has a chance because of what he does. If you're going to follow that particular high school team, you're going to have to tune in the time he's doing these broadcasts and follow the TV show, the TV programs, the follow afterwards and everything. It's, it, you know, it still has that appeal and still draws viewers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, excuse me, the one thing too that like Randy Crow even spoke about is that <clears throat> how they had to change their advertising and everything else when Sunny FM came to, came to market. Because Sunny FM really took the, the young people by storm, pretty much. Yeah. I remember when Sunny FM first came in, it was just, it was huge. Those whippersnappers <laughs> jumped right <laughs> <laughs> But it was huge. And like I say, I've talked to JoJo, and now we're going to get Jim Biggins, we'll talk with him, too. I mean, he was the, the money guy. He was the guy that went out there with the, what did they call like a, a limousine, I think, to go out there, and he just gave, up, gave away just money. Just threw cash out the back. And that's where Randy came up with that little thing that he got in trouble with the F FCC, or not, the, no, the, the, it was the, the feds. The Treasury Department. Yeah, the Treasury Department. Yeah, no, that's even there. worse. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, so, he, yeah. He got in trouble because of because of Sunny FM. He was trying to do something about the money thing. And, yeah, fake money. Yeah, yeah. I have to watch and that uh, they apparently, I guess, the Treasury Department has a problem with that. Yeah, as we yeah. learned. Yeah, uh, they they said they, they the, one of the things they said about the money. It was funny. It was a uh, it was a bill that looked like it was the actual length of a dollar bill, but half of it was printed as a hundred dollar bill and the flip side of that was a dollar bill. And they'd leave it on a table and everybody were on a floor. It was a gimmick. You'd pick it up and go, what did I find? Then they look on the other side and it talks about maybe you haven't listened to MUS or whatever, or, or WLRC or whatever the station he was involved in. It, yeah. it was MUS at that time. Yeah. So, you know, so he, and the funny part of that conversation, which he didn't share in the interview, but apparently they said, we want to recover all of the copies of this. Well, <laughs> that's, that's going to be virtually impossible. We don't know where they all went, but he said, we're, apparently we're not happy about that. Yeah. Like 40,000 of them? Oh, yeah, thousands. And I was like, yeah, good luck on getting those back. You know, you really so want to. So he's shown sunny day, man. <laughs> he's shown sunny. So, yeah. And it, it, yeah, it, it's just funny. But anyway, the museum won't be up. That exhibit won't be for at least three years. It's going to be a long-term process yeah. before we yeah. get there. So hopefully we all live long enough to, get, to see it happen. So. Well, you know, yeah. that's the idea, you know. Well, I, you know, I hopefully, I would love to see it at the end um, be something that would have some educational value yeah. and, and demonstrate a part of time in this community, but again, communities throughout America, right. uh, that, that their radio plays such a key role to people's lives. Um, I, I spent several years in Minnesota, and up there it was WCCO out of Minneapolis. was a legendary powerhouse, AM from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, that was just influenced most of the state. It was a 50,000 watt AM Clear Channel station. Not the owners of the company, but Clear Channel, when Clear Channel meant something different in radio. And so it, uh, it was amazing, and it, it, the influence it had on people. And I also think when you look at, uh, I always said this area was unique. Oh, yeah. You could listen to, well, we had great radio stations like True, but you also, if you liked, if you were a kid, you had GRD, mm -hmm. LAV, right. and ZZM in Grand Rapids. Right. Over in Milwaukee, you're listening to WOKY, the mighty 92. And of course in Chicago, you got WCFL, the Big Ten, and WLS, the Big 89, you know. Yeah. And in Detroit, if you could get it, then you're into DRQ and you're into some, uh, yeah, what is it, CKLW w out, w of, w uh, w w out of Windsor. Yeah, yeah W4. Oh, they, were, they had some great radio. So yeah. if you were into that at all, this was the area in the 60s and yeah. 70s, you just had a great selection right, of listeners. See, I, I grew up in Detroit, and that's where the W4, WDRQ, the DRQ, yeah, DRQ. CK, CKLW, I was, that was a great station when I was young. You Do know? you remember Nick Scott? Oh, yeah. When he was on MUS? Yeah. Uh, his brother, his older brother, John Lee, who became Chuck Roberts, uh, worked at DRQ in Detroit. Okay. He was in Grand Rapids, he was in Muskegon, he worked at Drew. Now DRQ, when I was growing up, I was a teenager, DRQ was on and uh, Maggie May just came out. Okay. You know, Rod Stewart. Right. 
and he says in that one spot where he says Q, the daddy's Q. Yeah. They skipped it three times on WDRQ just to push the Q. Q, Q, Q. Oh, I love yeah. it. Just I love it. Something like that. But anyway, they would do some creative. I think we're the only ones having fun here, so all well, these guys yeah, are going to say, sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Sorry, so. guys. No, this is interesting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I, I probably won't be invited. <laughs> Frequently so, I'm yeah, sure. I'm letting you know right now. <laughs> don't invite this guy talks forever. Yeah. Well, I, th I think what I ought to do, though, is because I come farther back than you people, and I come from New York, people. maybe I should take... <laughs> What do you mean by that? <laughs> Young, youngsters. Before radio. Youngsters. Maybe I should take this Whipper idea snappers. go yeah. back to New York and do the show back there with all the old stations that I was in back there. Oh, see? Yeah, yeah. Nobody. No, it's okay. But, <laughs> but I would guess that That's the, the State of New York Broadcasting Association it's probably has their own stuff. museum for that. I, I, would I don't. You know what? Um, the State of Michigan does. Yeah. They have a... Uh, they have a broadcast music. Were you going to go to great? Yeah, I was, was <laughs> going to go there, yeah. But we, we're going to come back now. Bob, do you want to do your thing first or do you want me to do mine? Yes. Okay, <laughs> sounds good. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're talking to you. Yeah, we love it. It's Yeah, okay, Jock and Tunes. This Are we down? We're back. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go away. It's time for trivia. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, cool. Yeah, it is that time of the show. You were having fun with that. Oh, yeah, I was. I got to admit. One of the greatest things I've ever had a chance to play with. All right. So, remember, this is how this works. Every week, we uh, have a couple of celebrities in the music industry. We talk about their background. We give you a few facts about them. And you try to guess who we're talking about. Okay. And if you want to interject and have a guess, you have to say stop. Give us your guess. If you're right, we end the quiz right there. You get the point. And if not, we continue on. And then you get to come back in the next round. So, that being said, our first... Wait a minute, wait a minute, we changed the rules. Don't worry, Bruno wins out. We changed the rules. Ask if you win two times in a row, you can't do it the next time. So if he wins tonight, he can't do it. Now, wait a minute, because Britta, you were here, but Britta won both of them last time. She won the first, they got the first okay, one. She's out. I didn't technically win because I was just like throwing out names and I finally got it right. <laughs> yeah, no, you she was, she Everybody's was awesome. eligible. Currently. No, no, she was Britta's awesome going to win, she but got okay got That's first, okay. First question. Here we go. I was born November 30th, 1955 in England, but I moved to New York with my parents when I was two years old. <coughs> Next clue. Four years later, we moved back to England, and in 1976, I co-founded the band Generation X. Phil Collins. <laughs> you didn't, you've not followed the rules. But. Oh, sorry, stop. No, sorry, I'm wrong. I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. I'm on Robitussin. I'm out. <laughs> see? See what she said? In 1981, I moved back to New York City to embark on my solo career, releasing an EP titled Don't Stop. Why do I, I know that? I, I, Thank you. All right. This time was up. <laughs> Well, I started wait, 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 released a what called, what was it? An EP. An EP. Yes. Yeah. We're still going. Although I started as a guitarist, I gained stardom as a lead vocalist. Um, stop. I don't, I think I might be wrong with Peter Frampton. Incorrect. Okay. Great guess. Thanks. After releasing several hit albums over the next 10 years, my career had a detour when I ran a stop sign on my motorcycle and got in a very serious accident, nearly oh. losing my leg in 1990. Yeah. <laughs> See, Paul, we should know these things. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, all, every every who you, who you give, Paul's like. Yeah. Just as my getting career closer, closer. was getting back on track in 1994, I collapsed outside of an LA nightclub after overdosing on the drug GHB. Brittany, you don't know either? Now, see, Brittany's a, a class because she did way back, was it way back lunch? Yes, I did. We know this. We know this. Anybody guesses, Brittany? But I'm on Robitussin right now, so I can't say anything. <laughs> so that was our time. We could get one. Next Robitussin clue. with We're, honey. We only got two left. In 1998, I made a cameo appearance as myself 
in the movie The Wedding Singer. <gasps> Billy Idol! Oh. Stop. Oh, sorry. It's fine. I was going to say Billy Idol. Oh, dude, we're not always here <laughs> before I do. I know she got it because she Stop. did it right. She followed no, the rules. It's okay. I never followed the rules. Can I, I, can I tell you a story about Billy Idol? Knew, Is it Billy that, Idol? I knew that song. Yeah, knew that. There was only one clue left. It was my autobiography was published in October of 2014 and became a New York Times bestseller entitled Dancing With Myself. Oh. Uh, that would have okay. right there. Yeah. But I knew yeah. it was so many yeah. we knew. I, when I lived in California, my sister and I went up to Hollywood one day. And we, we'd like to hang out on Sunset Boulevard because there were some really good cafes right there in Hollywood. And that's where you would see literally all the celebrities just coming out for lunch because that's where they lived. I literally sat as close as I'm sitting to you gentlemen right now to Billy Idol. And I was pretty much wetting my pants the entire time my sister and I and I tried to play cool I tried to be cool I tried to be cool and he was eating pasta like literally two feet from me in the table right next to me he, Billy, he didn't hit on you was he as nice no. as him? no <laughs> you're nicer than Billy Idol I didn't talk to Billy Idol I never met him I was too but anyway I love Billy Idol and I can't believe I didn't know that earlier I'm sorry I can't believe you didn't know that so you you're disqualified from the next. I'm round. disqualified. <laughs> I am completely. Yes, I am. I'm gonna. I'm gonna move it. I'm on Robitussin. Okay. <laughs> she overdosed on Robitussin in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's our next celebrity. I was born in on June 22nd, 1953, in New York City. So you can see the theme we got going here. It's very New York centric this week. I listened to artists such as The Beatles and Judy Garland, and I began playing acoustic guitar and songwriting at age 12. Stop. No, forget it. Go ahead. I just thought you said 55, so. I left home at age 17 to escape my abusive stepfather and study art, but I eventually ended up in Canada, where I spent two weeks in the woods with my dog, Sparkle. <laughs> where do you find this stuff? On Google or what? Where do you find I find it where, where it should be found. <laughs> Okay. I started singing with several cover bands, but in 1977, I damaged my vocal cords and was told by doctors I would never sing again. Oh, no. No, no. 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 I was thinking Bob, but no. However, I did recover and formed a band named Blue Angel and began recording original music. Stop. That's not Ron Stewart, is it? Nope. No. Oh, Stop. Stop. Born in New York City. Oh, 53. Where's got it? Where's Kim Carnes? Oh, that's a good guess, but it's wrong. Ah, oh, okay. I'm out. I released my first solo album titled She's So Unusual, peaking at <gasps> number four. Nice. Oh, nope. it's, I know. I was just gonna say. I was like, I can't yeah. say it. It's, 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 and she's been all over TV lately. Oh. Cindy Lauper. She peaked at number four in the U.S. and became popular in part two. Her variety of hair colors, eccentric clothing, and hybrid punk image. Her last clue was I've sold over 50 million records. And in 1984, I won the inaugural award for best female video on the MTV Music Awards for Girls Just Want to Have Fun. And she has been all over TV with her commercials because she suffers from yeah, psoriasis. Yeah. And yes, and she's been a Modern big. Severe plaque psoriasis. Yes, she's been all over television. And yeah. she was on um, the designer show on the Bravo Network. Oh. Yes, she was the guest oh. star last week or two weeks ago. Uh, uh, I know. We watched the show, Kathy. Kathy come on. Um, Christian Siriano. Christian Siriano. Oh, and, my gosh. Well, there you have it. Billy Idol yeah. and Cindy Lauper. <laughs> So, oh my gosh. Come back next week for two more. Project oh, yeah. Runway. Project Runway. Yes, there we go, Kathy. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there closer. <laughs> I'm getting closer. It's becoming more and more familiar. It yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one of these weeks. I'm Well, and all the artists that I've brought up, have they do play on 100.9 right here. Oh, do they? You can hear them all. Wow. Yeah. I'm impressed. At one point or another during one of our shows, we might hear one of those. Right here in WFFR. You, you drew, one of my favorite Cindy Lauper tunes is Girl All Night. Mm -hmm. You know that song? Mm -hmm. That's a great song. Yeah, great song. Yeah. But anyway, okay, so there you go. That was uh, Who Am I? And I have no more microphone. You got your microphone's yeah, down. Uh, yeah, things possessed. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of a And now he wore off. Right.
But my daughter, she wanted the Barney doll, and that Barney thing, we got her the Barney doll, and then you turned it on, and it said this few little things, and then you put it to the corner, and then all of a sudden it would come up and say, hey, where are you at? You want to play? And, you know, it, it, this thing did this all night, and you tried to turn it off, and it was possessed. It kept coming back on. But anyway, I don't know why I brought that up, just because I thought of it, but I guess I don't know. All right, <laughs> take a break. My game. I got game. Britta's got game. <laughs> I'm on Robitussin. <laughs> Welcome back to Talking Tennis on the all new 100.9 FM. I'm on Robitussin with honey. <laughs> you now have to say all. All of the once new. 100. Yeah. Is this better? Yeah. I like. 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 I I'm on Robitussin. I can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to remind you guys, though, that I don't know if you know this, but on YouTube, now Paul here, Peter Tripp, the curly headed kid in the third row, not the fourth row, he's in the third row. Third row. <laughs> um, him and I have been doing a show called Reminiscing for over 30 years, right? And we put, we put all the shows on, on uh, YouTube. YouTube. So if anybody wants to see anything about trivia, that's what we did. We talked trivia about old records. If you have one, you won't see anything. <laughs> or you might want to see it and then you'll never watch it again. But anyway, <laughs> just type in Paul Phillips, pretty easy to spell, and just put PT after that and you'll find like, I don't know, a couple thousand of them that will pop up. So there's all kinds of stuff on there. So you and I have been doing it for a long time. They, they, nobody knows us. You guys started nobody, on nobody MySpace, watched. didn't you? Huh? You guys started that on MySpace, didn't you? <laughs> did yeah, you, right. Did yeah. You, oh, okay. <laughs> But we started on WKBZ. We started doing it. We just enjoyed doing it. I, we built a little studio in his basement with four cameras. We never know where we're going. Yeah. 45, what? We don't want that one. Let's yeah. try another one. <laughs> but anyway, so if you want to, want to get a good laugh, Paul Phillips and PT. And it's right on YouTube. So All right, so here we go. What we do is we uh, play a song, and you got to sing the chorus. If you, if you want you to sing the chorus before I play the song. Start again here. Reverse. Okay. So if I say a song, you guys sing the chorus. If you get the chorus and it's the same chorus on the record, you're the winner of Paul. Paul, gee, right. <laughs> Dead silence. <laughs> okay, the first one, you know the song, even though you've never heard it by this artist probably before. Susie Quattro, All Shook Up. Uh -huh. I'm all shook up, right? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, how do you guys come on? Really? Did you just not want to do that? Because I can't sing. <laughs> There's no chorus to it. I was thinking of a different Susie Quattro song. I thought that was Elvis. You were. Oh, okay. Yeah. But this is by Susie Quattro on this 45. And she did a song with her. She did a She way. sounds cool. Yeah. Like oh, what that was voice. the name of it? It was a faster song from the 80s. Um, yeah. How do you know where that that Susie Woody hit she had? Yeah. Yeah. I know, that's why I'm like going, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, she was on, do you remember on Happy Days? Yeah. Pinky That was Pinky Tuscadero? Tuscadero? Yeah. yeah. She was Leather Tuscadero. Yeah. She was leather. No, Pinky was her. Was yeah, was was oh. She was leather. Yeah. The one that went. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Right, you're right. You're right. Don't challenge me on happy days, man. Well, what was that is it. Hey, did, did you, you ever know? Did you, ever, did you ever know that we went, we went to Wisconsin and we went to Milwaukee and we actually got pictures in front of the bronze spot? <gasps> So, I mean, you you know, did? Oh, oh man. Happy Days was my jam. And then right. Laverne and Shirley followed after that. Mm, yeah. Tuesday nights were my thing. Mm. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, All right, the next, one, <laughs> the next one is by the Carpenters from uh, 1973, and the song is called Sing. 
Oh, I, rem I remember the song. Yeah. I can't remember how it starts out, mm -hmm. though. Sing a song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Robitussin, thank you. <laughs> Did you ever get that one? On the Robitussin tour. Carpenters yeah. requested? Yeah. Yeah. I love the Carpenters. Did you ever get a yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that a piccolo? Sure. Do you know, do you, a little trivia about um, Karen. She was the drummer, and she didn't want to sing. She did not want to sing. She was the drummer, like our lovely Kathy, but she turned out to be, like our lovely Kathy, a beautiful singer. I, oh, I can't sing. She never sings. I mean, this is want to be a singer. This is the 50th anniversary from their first hit song when they came out. Which was what? I don't know. She just, oh, look at that. She just wanted to be the drummer. Yeah. She just literally wanted to be the drummer. Just, she did not want to sing. I was just watching old episodes of the dating game, and she was on the dating game. <gasps> really? Yeah, nice. Karen Carpenter. Really? Was, she was the woman trying to guess which the three guys she wanted to go out with. <laughs> what, what is that on, the dating game? I got to start watching that again. Uh, I was watching it on YouTube. YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, like the old 1970s and yeah, 60s yeah, yeah. when it first Jim Lang. Jim Lang. Yeah. yeah, and she was one of the girls on that show that was looking for a date. <laughs> Karen Carpenter. Well, Ted Bundy was on her too. Yeah, there was, there was some. Yeah, girl. was he really? Yeah. Well, he was a good-looking dude. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I gotta say, these records came from my brother-in-law. They were actually his um, his late wife. Um, which was right, right around the same age as I was. She was born in 58, I was born in 59, so it's stuff that I remember pretty well. But anyway, um, this one here, because you can tell this is a female that got some of these records because Bobby Sherman, anybody remember Bobby mm -hmm. Sherman? Mm -hmm. Here Comes the Brides, remember mm -hmm. Here Comes the Brides? Mm -hmm. Okay, Easy Come, Easy, easy Go. go. Mm. Paul Steve said, oh, come on, Paul. Well, yeah, I remember the song, but I can't remember how I it like goes. I like the Tesla version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the rock and roll version. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not it? No, I don't think so. Oh. Anyway, nobody? Okay, we stumped, we stumped the panel. What does that mean? Everybody's on Robitussin. <laughs> Easy go. Easy go. Mm. I mean, he had a ton of hits. But why? <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, yeah, right. He's a terrible singer. I get, you know. Was he good looking? I mean, I don't know. Well, here, you yeah, he was a little teen idol. Yeah. <gasps> yeah was he, was he on the Partridge Family or the Brady Bunch? No, no, he was a guest one, star. Either one. Oh, yes, he was. Guest well, star. He was a guest. Star. He was a guest star, and I want to say it was either. Partridge Family or the Brady Bunch, or it was he was a guest star. Maybe both. He was a guest star, and I'm trying to think you which show. The Partridge Family over there, all the Partridge Family. <gasps> I had that album. I had the. Yes, yes I had that album. All right, then you should be. Oh, should oh be bring it. Probably. What a show. Bring it. Uh, doesn't somebody want to be wanted? That's it. Yeah, it was the Partridge Family. He was the Partridge Family, He was a guest on there. He was on the Partridge Family. <sighs> I knew it. He was a guest star. I don't know the song though, dude. Oh, no, really? Yeah, that Robitussin hasn't. I know. Up yeah, too much. I need a nap. No. Oh my gosh. What's the, what's the B side? Uh, the B side is uh, "You Are Always on My Mind." You were always you on my mind. That's what we do. Yeah. Um, the other side is too. What? Doesn't somebody want to be wanted? Who did that originally? Uh, Brenda Lee. Oh, really? Oh, well, see, I'm learning something new here. I'm. So here, find we, out. here we go. We'll find out here. What is the like. vinyl? For the vinyl. Not the same it's one. Not, not the same one. No. Here we go. Here's the. Anybody ever watched that? Uh, I think it was on Netflix or it was one of them that, that uh, documentary on David Cassidy when he passed when he passed away. Mm -hmm. No, I want to watch it though. I it's on Netflix or something. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, I want it on Was that Sean Cassidy's brother? Were they brothers? Mm -hmm. yeah. They were half. They were half brothers. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Cassidy, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, he he died of uh, liver failure. Yeah. 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 And Shirley Shirley Jones he was it the whole time. Oh, that he okay. And wasn't his his father was quite a famous yeah, celebrity. Jack Jones. 
Yes, Jack Jones and Shirley yeah. Shirley Jones was the mother of Sean Cassidy and David right, right. Cassidy. And then they were half brothers. So okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, Jack Jones, he, he was a singer, but it was the kind of singer that I don't like. But anyway. <laughs> he, had a, he had a he had a couple of hits. Yeah, back mm -hmm. in the forties, maybe? 50s? No, fifties. Fifties, okay. All right, here's one that everybody knows. It's uh, on the Apple label. Okay. It was the uh George Harrison produced them, Badfinger, day after day. Day after day. <laughs> I told you, every song you sing sounds the same. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I remember it. <laughs> Any more? Any more than that, you know? No, I was it. That's it. Anybody know further? No? No. No. No, <laughs> no really? Okay. All right. Not even you? No, well, I, I remember a bad finger. Did bad finger do, uh, if you want it, here it is, come and get it. Day oh. after day. <laughs> That's how you... <laughs> what, what did he tell you? Not a man. I remember this song on WTRU. They used to play this song on WTRU. Oh, I'll totally give that to you. I remembered this. I did, uh, yeah, no, yeah. they played that song on WTRU. You remember, you remember that that group, some people thought were the Beatles. Yeah, well, George uh, Harrison. Recording was recording under a different name. Yeah, yeah. And they were accused of that. Because yeah. Because of the same label. Like, Apple label, yeah. Yeah. And I remember one of our Who Am I from earlier, a couple weeks ago, when there was an artist that they released with a blank label yeah. because they wanted him to think it was the Beatles. Yep. And it was the early Bee Gees. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I remember you saying that. Yeah. to get more airplay, yeah. Yeah. and then they found out it was the Bee Gees after they thought it was the, the Beatles. Yeah. So, yeah, there we go. Okay, but I got one more. Last one. I, the reason I brought Glenn Campbell, the reason I brought this one, Capital Label. Where's Glenn Campbell had quite the career, though. He started as uh, one of the, like a, a studio One of the musician. Beatles. <laughs> he's a studio musician because he played guitar so well. Yeah, yeah. He, was, uh, he was a crazy And he was also the one that stood player. in for uh, Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys because Brian didn't want to travel, so, so uh, Glenn Campbell filled in for him. Hmm. And uh, I mean, he was a pretty amazing guy. I mean, there's a documentary on him too that was pretty good. He also played. He actually did. He, he also actually played did a documentary on him when he was when he had Alzheimer's. It's called "I'm Dwayne. Still Me." The last the last yeah, couple years, it's it like was, he was it, on it tour was awesome. and it was with his kids. Was his kids are really accomplished yeah. musicians. Yeah. Really good. He so, played. He played with Dwayne Eddy too. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he was he part of the Wrecking Crew. Was very good. The Wrecking Crew. That's mm -hmm. it. Did he do some acting too? Wasn't he in? Yeah, yeah he, he did, was in. He uh, did Red. Yeah, Red. Red. Oh, okay. yeah. That yeah. was so bad. Yeah, that was so. Bad. Didn't say he was a good actor. Didn't say he was an actor. He was an actor. Yeah, yeah. he acted in that. That was probably the only movie I think. Right, it was that one. I remember him being in that. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm Glenn Campbell. <laughs> He's a rhinestone <laughs> cowboy. <laughs> but the reason I this everybody knows Galveston, I'm pretty sure. But on the flip side of this, I thought it was very very funny. It was a it was a song that Glenn actually wrote himself. <laughs> It's called Every Time I Itch, I Wind Up Scratching You. That's a glad one camera won't that Wow. Yeah. You gotta be kidding me. No, say I'm that? serious. There it is right there. Every time I itch, I wind up scratching you. <laughs> So anyway, Gal that might be a great song for your uh, renewal. Yeah. Of your <laughs> Good <tip>. <laughs> 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 I need you to scratch me in that spot, please. Thank you. Good. Um, oh, anyway, so Galveston. Anybody? Anybody? Galveston. Oh, Galveston. 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 He's the kind of yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. You got about a ninety percent chance. Yeah. <laughs> but I got to play a little bit, just a little bit. Which one are you playing? <laughs> Still see her dark eyes. Oh, okay, that's She was 21. That fine fidelity too, I'm telling you right there. <laughs> but here we'll play just a just a sample of that with the chorus, of course. You know my love. For you. So I work real hard to strike it with you. But every time I do, I blow it all on some old witch. I blow it all on some old witch. I'll come every time I 
<laughs> wow. I don't know. I mean, what is he talking about? <laughs> I don't even want to know what he's talking about, really. He have his <laughs> <laughs> He needs some uh, but I just yeah, couldn't believe that. I couldn't believe that title. It was written by Glenn Campbell and Jeremy Slate. If I was Jeremy, I wouldn't want to be on the label to say that I wrote that song. But yeah, I can't, I'll see a year on it, but it had to be one of his early Sounds like he needs antibiotics for that one. Put that on the back side. Yeah. The side. Now, Paul and I do that on our reminiscing show. Yeah. We do that a lot of times because we'll do 45s and we'll, we'll listen to the B side because sometimes the B sides are more fun than, than the A sides. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. That's a lot of time when you see the 45 fly over a big screen TV in the other <laughs> part of the basement. You know, it, it didn't work out too well. Well, if you remember, the Beatles had a problem. Actually, it was a problem. They said early on, every song they recorded was a hit. I know. And so they put a song on the B side. And they have two sets of hits. Yeah. yeah. And they're yeah. selling it with one record. They're going, boy, we're boy, we should have split that one up. <laughs> yeah. And we did that too. There's a lot of them that were. Yeah. Well, I had one last week, uh, Carol King, which was a two-sided hit too. I mean, it, it, that yeah, happens every once in a while. Well, you know, Bruce yeah. Springsteen was it born in the USA or mm -hmm. something like that. And the flip side was Pink Cadillac. Yeah. And of course, that was a song that was made famous by uh, Natalie Cole. Well, Kiss, Kiss, Beth was the B side of um, that, and that turned out to be a ma yeah, major yeah, hit yeah. for Kiss. Was Beth, you know, and they that wasn't even supposed to be. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. A lot of fun. And Bob and I talked about he had the forty-five too with uh, Chuck Berry when one uh, one side was uh, uh, my dingle laying on the floor. <laughs> Johnny be good, and they're saying. The Pink Floyd is coming up next. You gotta leave. Yeah. Like, oh, you yeah. hit that forty-five? I did. You did. Yeah, me too. I think really? I did. I don't know if I have it anymore. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Very that's bad. that's uh, forty-five uh, chorus line for you today. And uh, do we have anything else that we want to share with anybody? And no, yeah, we done. So we want to thank you, sir, for coming. Oh, well, thank in. you for yeah, letting me join you guys. This is fun. Seriously, it was great. Thank you very much. Yeah, we have fun. Yeah, we, we definitely do. have fun. So. Okay. So we say goodbye. Do you, you want to sing a song, Bob? Or I'm Mr. <laughs> Mr. Microphone? <laughs> <laughs> that thing is never, never again. <laughs> that was a wonderful wonder. <laughs> we will not, that will be appearing you know, at your renewals or your vowels, you know, and that's about that'll, it. That'll, that'll be, that'll be the, the fun toy for my grandkids to play with and drive us crazy. Is what yeah. Be, so anyway, okay. So talking to us, we'll see you again next, uh, next Saturday. Same time, same place.